anybody who plays poker, you know this. Not a single person is whipping out a graphing calculator during the game to try to figure out their probabilities on the fly. You're not. You're not allowed to. You're not allowed to use technology. You're not allowed. You're not even allowed to have your cards out of sight of the other players. So this is all stuff that you have to be able to do in your head. And simple calculations aren't even that bad, because the reality is you're not. I mean, you're not multiplying massive numbers. You're not actually trying to figure out the probability. You're just trying to get a sense. That goes back to what I was talking about before with the experimentation pattern recognition and things like that. You just want to get a feel for what's going on. I see two aces out on the table. All right. I have two aces in my hand. There are four aces in total. I have four of a kind. I am going to win. All right. At that point, I can safely and I mean, it's a certain event. Not a single other person has an ace because they're all accounted for. I have two of them. There's two on the table. Now, there might be another person that's like, they, they could be bluffing. And I've had this before. A person tries to bluff me with the cards that I have in my own hand. They're like, well, how do you know I don't have four of a kind? I'm like, all in. I know you don't have four of a kind. He's like, oh, you do, don't you? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. He's like, nah, you're full of it. I'm like, no, I'm not. I promise you. And he's like, all in. Thank you so very much for playing, you know, so. <laughs> exactly. I'll wear a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like order matters. It's pretty, pretty obvious. Now, three coins, three coins is a little bit of a different story compared to two coins because there's a lot more variation going on there. All right. When you flip a coin once, you've got two possibilities. You flip a coin twice, you have four. That's not out of hand. Three, you have eight. Four, if you flip a, flip a coin four times, you're going to have 16. They, they increase by uh, powers of two. And that, that, that gets out of hand pretty quickly. Not as quickly as it does for dice, though. Because you can see, you, you, you roll a die one time, six possibilities, not too bad. Yeah. You roll a die a second time, all of a sudden you have 36 outcomes. Do it a third time, you have 216 outcomes. A fourth time, I believe it's 1,296 outcomes. All right, so it's outrageous very quickly. So to keep track of those probabilities is pretty insane, which is why you don't see too many games of chance that involve two or uh, three or more dice. Like a game of chance in a casino that involved three, four, five dice, nobody would play it. Like, I don't have a chance of winning this. Imagine what that game would go. It would be like, all right, so I have four dice, and I need to get a sum of 14. There's like a thousand different ways that can happen. I mean, that's an exaggeration, but there's a lot, you know. So I'm not taking that chance. In this case, two dice, there are patterns. So seven is a very popular outcome in a game of chance called craps. I like uh, learning about that game because it, it kind of recalibrated. It's kind of like a little retcon of my previous life where certain words and terms I always thought meant one thing. Turned out they didn't mean that at all. Like a crapshoot. Like if something's a crapshoot, you're saying that it's, you know, it's completely up to chance. Like uh, I'm low on gas. It's going to be a crapshoot as to whether or not I get home. I don't know. It's, it's hit or miss. I don't know. It, it could happen. It could not happen. But before I knew about this game of chance called craps, I thought a crap shoot was something completely different. And the imagery in my mind is, I mean, I, I can't even like describe it. It's disgusting. But you, you crap out of luck. Um, now, up craps creek, that actually might mean what it, what it would normally mean. I don't think that has to do with the game of chance. Because there's the alternative version of that up someone else's creek, a uh, synonym for crap. Uh, but that's unrelated. But you know, all those crap-related things, are, they it generally have to do with this. And that, that was just mind-boggling for me. But in the game of craps, 
one of the outcomes, a very popular outcome, is the number seven. Anytime you watch a movie involving people throwing dice in a casino, usually a James Bond movie or something like that, you have a person rolling a dice, Austin Powers, I think, did it, and they'd yell out, seven! Like, why is seven so important? Well, I just highlighted all the different ways in which you can get a seven. It's more than the number of ways you can get a six or a five or a four or whatever. So, okay, it's the more popular value, the more popular sum. Now, in a game of craps, a seven or an 11 could be a winning number or it could be a losing number, depending on what part of the game you're in. But what makes craps so popular is because, and, and reason why I shied away from the game for so long is because I was like, how do I, how do I get next? You know, like if you, you know, you always see one person rolling the die or the dice. It's like, how, how do, where's the line? How do I get online for that? And what I didn't realize is that everybody can gamble in the game. It's unrelated to who's throwing the dice. So you can bet on the outcome of the throw you, uh, in, in a way where you're betting for it, betting against it, betting that it's going to be higher than a particular number, betting that it's going to be lower than a particular number. There's a lot of different attributes there, and it, and it can get very confusing and daunting. And trying to evaluate the probabilities is a nightmare. Because right? I mean, when you think about the different aspects of the game of craps, it, it's, it's crazy. So I'll show you, when we talk about games of chance, I'll show you a diagram of a, grap, a craps table, and we'll talk about what each component means. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, generally, what people do is they decide on a strategy that they like, and they just live off of that strategy. Right? Unlike blackjack, where whatever's out, whatever cards are out, sort of dictate what, what moves you make. Craps are, are, are very different. Um, the standard deck of 52 cards, you have the four suits. They call them suits for some reason. I have no idea why. Uh, hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. It was actually in this course where I learned what a spade was. I was like, how did they get that? Um, it, it's based after the shovel. There's a, a, a type of shovel called a spade, and it looks very much like this symbol, upside down. Right? It's the pointier-looking shovel. I'm like, oh, cool. Because the other ones, they all seem to make sense. I don't know why the three-leaf clovers are black, but it, it, that wasn't important to me. Diamonds and, and hearts, they all seem reasonable enough. I know that there's some tarot card or, origin behind uh, a deck of cards. I, I didn't really look too much into that, though. Uh, 13 Pursuit, right? So 2 through 10 are your numerical cards. Jack, Queen, King, and Ace are the non-numerical cards. All right. Non-numerical cards, we assume, have no numerical value. So you might be familiar with Blackjack or games like that where the Jack, Queen, and King are worth 10 and the Ace is worth 1 or 11. Not the case for all games. So we don't assume that they have numerical values unless you're told so in the problem. Now, jacks, they could be thought of as being equivalent to one another. We could say J equals J equals J equals J, but we're not going to say that J is equal to 11, Q is equal to 12, or nothing like that. All right? So no numerical values, but they are equal to each other, or at least that's the way we're going to operate. Uh, prime numbers seems to be kind of really inconsistent with everything else we've been talking about. It's like, let's talk about coins, dice, cars, and pri prime numbers. Where the hell did that come from? Uh, well, if you look at the, the lower portion of the primes, really just focusing on these guys, they correspond with some of the cards that are in a deck. And they also correspond, at least 2, 3, and 5, with the numbers that are on a die. So it, I go over this because it, it, it brings up a, a nice opportunity to kind of merge concepts and talk about, like, if I were to say find the probability of getting a red card that is also a prime number. You know, so if you don't know what a prime number is, then you're, then you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. All right, so by definition, any number... divisible by two unique whole numbers.
All right, you might have learned a different definition. Um, I don't like that, the, the one that you would see in a textbook, because I don't think it... I don't think it tells the complete story without you having to add information to it. Like, if I were to say any number that's divisible only by one in itself, then I have to answer your question of, well, what about one? And I say, okay, well, any number bigger than one. So now i got to add to that definition. Okay, well, what about negatives? Okay, they have to be non-negative, right? So now I'm consistently adding to that definition to make it work. This one works. It has to be divisible by two unique whole numbers. Whole numbers are the set of 0, 1, 2, all the way up to infinity. So 1, for example, is not prime because it's divisible by only 1. Right? There's no other thing I can divide it by to get a whole number as a result. No other whole number. But if I take 29, that is prime, because I could take the 29, divide it by the 1, and get 29. I could take the 29, divide it by 29, and get 1. All right, so two unique values. These numbers form the basis of our numerical system, which means, well, it's a pretty complicated idea, but it, it basically means that every number can be represented in terms of prime numbers. So if you think to yourself, well, this seems out of place and useless, well, maybe now, maybe for the foreseeable future, but it won't always be. Because if you can always represent numbers in terms of primes, then that tells us that this is the essence of our numerical system. And if numbers are universal, then, then it's the essence of everybody's numerical system, which is really pervasive because every time they send messages out into space, which they do, they always include a set of prime numbers. Because if there's intelligent life out there, they may not understand a word that we say, but if they know anything about math, and math is universal, then they should be able to identify the prime numbers and recognize us as an intelligent race. Right? So, so it's pretty cool when you think of it that way. It's just, like, how's that going to help me in my job? Yeah, probably not, but at least you can sound intelligent around the water cooler. <laughs>